Hey everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. On today's episode, we're gonna work on, well, this ficus. Back in October of 2022, I sent out a a quick little message to Weigert's Bonsai asking if I could get some trees shipped in time for a possible late October uh, workshop that I was going to work with some students uh, at my school with an after school program. Turns out we weren't able to fill the enough spots to make it happen so I think we're going to shoot for the spring. But I ordered these trees from Weigert's and it was back when the hurricane hit and they were just running around you know like well, with a chicken with its head cut off, right? Just crazy trying to save trees and figure out what was going on. And uh, Andrea down there was nice enough to find some replacement trees for the melon seed ficus I was hoping for. There was some damage to some trees down there. They didn't have enough melon seed that she was feeling comfortable sending my way. And so she sent me this ficus. Now, it looks very similar to my Benjaminas. Um, and I can't recall, I can't find the paperwork to find out what this tree is. But before I publish this, I have already sent messages to Andrea, but it is really close to the new year. So hopefully she can get back to me the next day or so and uh, I can put on here. And even if it's um, uh, post release of this video, take a look at the description down below. I'll put the title in there if I don't have enough in soon enough time to put this um, ready for this uh, release. Now it was shipped, it did okay, and it's been in my plant room ever since. And so now that we're into January, and this is since October, no, uh, October, some of October, November, December, almost three months to acclimate to my plant room. We've got the heat, you know, we've had the humidity we've talked about, but now we have to see, I kind of want to see what's happening in the roots of these trees because they're not putting out a lot of growth, but they just might be resting. So why would I do this now? Well, one of the things I've talked about a lot on this channel, and you'll hear from certain people that are working with bonsai and have done it for a while, anytime you get a tree um, from someone else and you don't know what's going on in there, um, it's, that's a decent time to repot, as long as you can provide good aftercare. So again, it'll have the warmth of my room, it'll have some of the humidity, and we'll see what this can do. Now, it's not that it's not growing because look right down here. Look at those two new shoots way down at the bottom. Now, that's kind of low for a shoot, um, but uh, this is a good branch right here, good uh, distance up. And uh, so there's been some new growth up at the tips, and then this has just been shooting out pretty recently. So I know there's energy going through here. I know things are okay, but I want to see the system. Now, I've gotten many a trees from Weigert's because those are the trees we use for our summer workshop with Minnesota Bonsai Society. But let's dig into this thing. Let's see what the roots are looking like, and then we'll put it into this pot. Now, the reason I chose this tree is because look at this root. You don't see too many bonsai with that structure. Now, I don't have access to my bigger rocks, but boy, a big old rock could go in there. But even if there was a rock under there, what, what root would get? Well, you know, who knows with bonsai trees, right? Let's dig into it and see what we've got. We have the tree out of the pot now, and so we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna take away the soil and see what we've got. Now, I recently watered my uh, ficus down here, so it's a little bit wet. I'd, ra I'd rather have it a little bit drier for the um, repotting, but um, the soil that uh, they use down in Weigert's has a lot of, um, a lot of uh, bark, a lot of pine bark in there and kind of a sandier material. So it's not like gonna be this hard, chunky clay, cheap dirt. Um, and so things are gonna probably spread out from here pretty easily, pretty quickly. And I won't have to really struggle too hard, even though it's kind of a, a little bit wetter than I would typically like to um, do my repots. If you water your tree and let it sit for a couple of days and then go ahead for the repot, you're gonna probably be uh, in a little bit better shape overall. It certainly won't be as messy um, but you can always uh, um, clean that out. Now, my thumb is already damaging these two and it's just gonna get worse, so they're just gonna come off. I know there's new growth there. I know that the tree has uh, lots of uh, cellular movement in there, so I'm not worried about those two. They're too low in the tree. I don't want them there, so I'm just gonna bruise them as I already bumped, so. So, preliminary look at this. 
Um, we've got some definitely some wrapping roots down below. Um, I have no idea how long it's been in this pot. Um, my guess is this is a you know five-year tree for sure for the thickness of the trunk. And we'll just continue to tease this away until we feel we have enough teased away to repot this tree. I could probably bare root this tree. Um, being that it's not summertime and I don't have the ideal uh, aftercare, like the full sunshine. Uh, of course, I would keep this in the shade for a couple of weeks after a repot. So down here in the plant room with the warmth and not direct sun for a couple of weeks is just fine. And then of course I'll keep it as close to the lights as possible for its recovery after that first couple of weeks. My uh, grow lights down here are not going to uh, create, you know, any kind of uh, damage as far as, you know, like a, like a sunburn or anything like that, of course, because they're just not hot enough. Just not uh, powerful enough. It's not very often that I can hold a tree by a root like that when I'm working on the tree. So we obviously have a lot of long, lanky roots that are not going to be used in the final design. So we're going to go ahead and we're just going to cut those big roots off right away. Just to ease that out. And when I was uh, working on this, you know, I was able to get this root completely free. I was able to get this one, look at this one wrapping around, it's becoming a new one like this. And that's wrapping around. Look at the movement on that root. It comes up around here, it curves around right there, it comes up and look, and look that, that's just absolutely crazy root stuff. And then, so this one is real nice and loose now, this is loose, this is loose. We can reposition those. So one of the great things, of course, about repotting a tree that's new to you and has some of these more gnarly looks. Now again, the reason why I'm picking this one out is because if I do have that workshop, even though the younger kids, the high school students, really won't know what they're looking for in a tree, some of them might find this really big, gnarly root super, super cool. But um, if I were to bring this to one of the Minnesota Bonsai Society workshops, I think this one would be left on the table. Um, you just never know. You never know what people might be interested in, but uh, it's just a, might be just a little bit too out there uh, for folks to uh, gravitate towards this tree. So I've gotten a good chunk of the dirt out and I've got my pot here. So right off the bat, I just want to see if it's going to fit in the pot and it will. Maybe not with this though, we'll see. So we'll continue to tease away at that. I do need my drainage screens put into the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of wire in there and we'll take care of that. I have the drainage screens into the pot and now we're going to kind of see what we might do with this tree. We still have a lot of uh, soil in there. We have some uh, wood chips still hanging out in there. I have not really even found the exact place where the roots start growing. There it is back there. It's that really curly root. So, so this root right here starts from the tree right there. There's the start of the flare. It comes back towards me curves down and up around to you, back over here, Kirk screws around here, comes up here. That is something else. Now, because this is such a unique tree with a unique root system already, you know, I don't know, do I keep that in there? Do we keep some really bizarre, interesting root patterns? Or do we start making this thing into more of a traditional bonsai where people can go like, yeah, that's a little more realistic. Well, remember, this is a very subjective art form, beauty, in the eye of the beholder, all of that, if you think something is right for you, you go ahead and do it. You might look at me today while I'm working on this tree and say, what in the world was he thinking? And that's totally okay. And that's where I appreciate the Bonsai business and, and, and the Bonsai family on YouTube and the people who have been watching my channel and other people that I watch. When we make comments, we're super, super respectful and polite about it. And uh, I, I don't typically hear a lot of, you know, that was stupid, why did you do that? And some people will say, did you ever think of maybe this? Or have you thought of this angle? Ooh, that's a great idea. No, I hadn't. Or 
here's why I didn't do that. Um, but it's been usually done in a super respectful way, which is super appreciated. So we have to find what we're gonna do with this tree now. Now, it has kind of a bizarre, this branch or root, like these roots, this is just really big. There's a great big kink in it right here, and then another root that wants to go right next to it, but this kink makes it look like half of this is not even providing the nutrients that it needs. Plus it goes way down here and I can't see how far, there it goes. So if I separate these two out a little bit, There's, there's that root. And I just don't like that root. I don't want it to continue. That's coming off this tree. So there, there you have that root. Now, I'm not going to throw this away. Look at all the roots I have growing on this structure right now. I have some small feeder roots, I have some bigger roots, I almost have a tap root right here. Get rid of that. There we go. And, and look what we have here. We have the makings of perhaps another, albeit a little bizarre looking bonsai tree. I think I gotta get my sharper scissors. We have some roots here. Now I don't want these roots, I don't care about those. but. I have some roots that are coming out of the tree right here that provide a really nice already curved tree that goes up this way and comes around that way and could provide some, some interesting future tree. So we'll put this to the side and we will put that in a new tree, a new pot rather, so we can possibly create a new bonsai tree. So we got the sap running out of this tree. Make this cut so we don't see any of that, what used to be a bulge. Now, taking that piece out and that bulge created a little bit of a reverse taper down in here. So that's not super uh, um, wonderful, but we can change the angle of this planting. We can have it an angled planting. We can move this root out of the picture because that one's probably gonna come out too. Now we have a couple of aerial roots that create uh, um, some nice, interesting, perhaps design in this tree. And my question is what to do with this really gnarly root. I mean, my, my, my thought right off the bat here is to take it off. Now I have another really big root on here, which is part of the tree. It circles around and comes out. This root right here comes right around here and circles around there. And I have to be careful when I take out a root like that, because am I going to get rid of most of this other fine feeder root? And, I know I can take it off to here comfortably. So I'm going to take that part off. It's kind of tangled in some other roots. And it gets skinnier and skinnier. And look at that. So look at that root. That was from the bottom trunk kind of tap root, cone around 360 and going around. Oh my gosh, amazing, amazing uh, root mess really in here. And I don't know if that's why this tree isn't growing very very ferociously. The roots are just spinning around and around. Like there's a big chunk of root that's not doing me a whole lot of good. So I'm getting this further and further back. And we're gonna go further and further back. Look at that, nothing but a solid root. And this comes back to the base of the tree. So what I'll do is I'll cut it at a little bit of an angle here and hope we can get some down facing roots. Needed my bigger cut. There we go. There. So there's that root I just cut, and now it's I kind of cut it from an angle this way, so the roots maybe can grow out and down and make them a bit of a flare there down the road if we get lucky enough with that. So that big root was a big part of this tree, a big clunky part. And we still have one more roundabout root. 
think we have a couple roundabout roots. This is the aerial root. This one just comes off the trunk but circles way around. I'm going to go ahead and cut this off at the base as well. And then this right here is that next curly Q root that goes right here. It curves around this way, goes around and curves back. I don't know if I can take it that low or not yet. That's going to be my question. I have this aerial root with some feeder roots. I have these aerial roots with feeder roots. Even this crazy one has some feeder roots, which we could take off at a future pruning. We got a couple of roots in here. So I got a root right here. This one right there goes down. This one goes down. This one goes down. So, you know, if I were to be brave here, the, the cut would be right here where this gnarly root re reaches the base of this tree. And so that's what we're going to do. Look at that. Look at that curly, curly mess. And now this looks like many trees I've worked on with Peter T. <laughs> where we've demolished a good chunk of the tree. Okay. Okay. So now we have gotten rid of a good portion of the roots. But we can now place this in the pot with all kinds of leftover roots that are um, that are going to be enough to feed this tree. We'll trim off some of the foliage up top, not a ton, and there we have a tree. Now we could lean it this way and this aerial root will support the tree. This one we're going to tuck around into the soil and see what we do with that later. Might be a little hard one to tuck in there, but we'll get that in there. We've got this aerial root we could kind of straighten out too and make that go out more out to a distance like this. There we go. And then straighten it out as it gets thicker. All right, so let's clean up, get some soil in here, and we'll put this thing in the pot. We have some soil in the pot. We've got our tree all trimmed up. And now we'll put it in the pot, bury this root as best we can. I have a feeling it's going to want to snap right back up into the surface until we get some rocks in there maybe. I grabbed a rock real quick and I have the root kind of, you know, tamped down a little bit. But I want to take a look at this now because I haven't seen even what I've done with this tree because you're looking at the front part of that tree. I think that's generally okay. We're not quite on center with where this touches the soil. We do have the bump up root here that I'm just tamping down a little bit here. So that's the next root that'll swell up and make this tree look a little bit odd. I don't know. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty thick root. It's not even moving much with that rock right there doing that. My other option, of course, would be to wrap it around this rock. Wrap this root underneath. But I don't think we're going to do that. Need to find that place where it'll stay down. I have rock number two for the back part of this root. I'm going to go ahead and lay that down and that's holding it down a little bit more to my liking. So there we go. Let's get a little bit more soil. This is my Akadama Pumice Lava Rock, 30, 30, 30, 33, 33, 33. One part each. Gonna have good drainage, a little bit of moisture retention with the Akadama.
So this was a pretty major, major root job with a tree that I don't even know the name of yet. Um, ficus, there are over 8,000 varieties of ficus. A lot of the ficus trees react very, very similarly. similarly. So I'm confident that uh, the roots that I left on this tree and where it's at right now, I just cleaned up these roots. They're not circling around choking each other off like they kind of were because they were kind of choking each other off before. So now this is free to grow a little bit more freely and I hope that'll uh, be a, a, a good benefit to this tree. So the rocks in the back are holding down that gnarly root just because I didn't want to lose one more root. We've got this tree right here that could be moved in the future if we want to. We could guy wire this. Uh, so then I've got the rest of this tree. Now, the problem with this tree right off the get-go, besides the reverse taper down here that we hope will go away, um, we can manipulate the angle of the tree in the future to minimize that. We can all see that later. Um, this could be the tree right here. We could cut this all off right here and make this the tree someday. Now we're not going to make that bold of a cut today, but I will manipulate this tree a little bit because if you look from here to here, there's hardly any movement and it sticks straight, right? And we don't want that. There's a little movement up here, but then up here it just goes back into um, straightness. So we are going to have to get rid of some of this tree. And I'm awfully tempted to go down to a stick in a pot. But because I just repotted this, I am going to hold off a little bit. What I am going to do is I'm going to go ahead and trim this back right here. I'm going to trim this back to here. This has some new buds that look a little weak, but there is some branches up there. I'm going to cut it and save it for the smaller one. And the new bud back here, there's a bud here and here. Now, this is the front of the tree. We've got this, we've got this here. We've got two leaves right here. These are grown from the same spot. This is a bigger, healthier branch. This one's a little bit weaker. There's also a new bud in there. I'm right now just going to go for the bigger one, just for the health of this tree, and keep those trees there. And this can come back further over here, possibly. Now I have this branch in the back that's just kind of competing against the one I just cut there. And then I think I'm going to cut it down one more time yet. And it's going to be a scar. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut this one down and of my main branch here, I'll cut it down, I'll cut it down there as well. So now we have a slanting tree with a couple of supportive roots that have air layer down. They're close to each other. I might take one of them out in the future. Um, I don't have air layering growing conditions down here at the moment, but maybe this summer if I get the greenhouse going, yeah, you heard it here. I'm hoping to build a greenhouse this year. Um, this could be a good candidate to be out there in a greenhouse with a lot of humidity. So I still didn't get rid of the straight thing here, but I want this to be enough photosynthesis going on to send down some to those roots, which are very few and far between now. We cut off enough foliage to not stress out those few roots, and we just have a tree here that we'll see what's gonna happen in the future. This could become the new leader really, really pretty simply. We can cut this right here. Now we have this tree that's just gonna go like this and then grow, right? So I see that for the future, but I'm gonna err on the side of caution and leave it right here for now. So I need to water this and then we'll put it back on its bench underneath the lights and then see how it reacts. I need some water. We have it all watered up. It's looking really nice. I put a lot of water in there to make sure it really soaked through all the bonsai soil. All of it's draining through really nice. We've got a clear drain water now, so we know that we've gotten rid of some of that powdery part of this uh, soil. We are good to go. We can put this back on the bench and see what happens. So again, repotted this now because I have decent aftercare for this tree and I wanted to see what these roots looked like. So I have a few other trees in this collection. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think I have seven more. Um, and a couple other ones aren't growing as wildly either. And some of the roots are coming up. And so this tree is 
must lend itself to a lot of really curly root structure because this was just gnarly beyond anything I've ever seen so far in my ficus. So I have another one. Well, I have one right here actually within arm's reach. So look at this one. This has got a root that comes off of the uh, trunk here. There's a big swirl back on itself, back over here, then it goes down here and here. That's just, that's just not typical for a tree. Um, and then this one, excuse me, coming around like this. So here's another one. This one's got actually some movement right here, but then this branch right here too, right? So I'm a little bit thick up here. So again, I want to leave it so I can have my uh, high school students work with the tree, but now I know what those root systems are like and what we can kind of expect. So let's get this on the bench and call it another tree done. Hey, thanks for watching, and uh, I can't wait to see what happens. Yeah, until the next one, hey, take care of you, take care of your bonsai, and we'll see you very, very soon.